I'm Brad Hayden. I'm the Vice President of Marketing here at Aspen Avionics. We wanted to start out our tour by looking at our integration lab, which is something that we're really proud of here at Aspen. The Evolution Flight Display's power is its ability to work with a wide range of legacy avionics systems that are already installed in aircraft today. As you know, the average age of the fleet is like 30 years old. The, a lot of these planes have been through multiple panel uh, generations and have a wide range of equipment in them. So we use this integration lab to actually turn on our displays and then switch on and off different avionics components, including GPSs, navcoms, etc., and make sure that our equipment works seamlessly with the installed avionics that's already going to be in somebody's aircraft. So as you see, we have a typical three-tube installation that you would see in an average uh, Aspen customer's aircraft. Uh, the 500 MFD on the left with the PFD in the center and the 1000 MFD. Again, the fully redundant systems, this easily becomes your PFD in the event of a PFD failure. You can see that we're showing right now the configuration of an approach chart. This is uh, ILS Runway 2 for Santa Fe. And with the geo-referenced aircraft on the chart, when it goes off the chart, it actually centers again so that the pilot doesn't become confused and think that they're somewhere on the chart when actually they're, they're not. And then on the uh, 1000, you can see that we've actually got uh, the uh, terrain data uh, displayed as well as um, the nav map. And so if you can see the correlation between the uh, GNS 480 showing the approach uh, into this airport, you can see that displayed on the uh, bottom of the PFD on the uh, nav map and over here on the approach chart. Many different references for the pilot to uh, increase situational awareness so they know where they're at in the approach and as well as uh, where they're at with the attitude of the aircraft. This lab piece itself is really quite impressive. If you look, um, and I'm not going to touch any of the switches because uh, goodness knows what I'll, I'll break or turn off, but we do have the capability to engage or disengage the wide range of avionics here so we can test these displays with each one of these avionics which you're going to see in a typical customer's aircraft. You can also see that we've got an antenna here and that is our RSM antenna and that provides data in for GPS uh, positioning and we also have weather hooked up to this thing so we could show you weather if there was any weather in the Santa Fe area right now for you to look at but fortunately for the balloon fiesta it's a clear day and this is really the, the system that these displays, when we're developing, have to pass muster. If they won't work with the existing avionics in the aircraft, then they're really not going to fulfill the promise that we've made to our customers to be compatible and inter interoperable with the existing avionics. Integra Release 9 sets a new standard with the easiest to use pilot interface in all of general aviation. Access to any of Release 9's powerful capabilities is as simple as pressing the desired bi-directional page key. Pressing the same key in a desired direction navigates to the clearly labeled tabs with no more guessing as to what a given pilot input would do. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology and the easiest to use page and tab user interface is just one of the many benefits designed to make your flying easier and safer. Hi, my name is John Usick. I'm the president and CEO of Aspen Avionics. Uh, earlier you had a little bit of a tour of our systems lab with our VP of Marketing, uh, Brad Hayden. In this area we do our production. Uh, it's primarily the production facility. Aspen has been growing quite rapidly and as a result of that we've had to upgrade and continue to grow our production facilities. In today's world now you have to be able to have low cycle times, good processes in terms of how you develop your products, but also how you support them and how you, and how you do. We procure most of our parts and we manufacture by assembling the different units together and this facility is where we do that uh, assembly. Units come from all over the world, whether they be from the glass that we get from, from Asia to locally built mechanical instruments here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We assemble each of our different units here, both our renowned uh, display unit, the Evolution Flight Display, as well as our remote sensor module and our other boxes that support the interface. And what you see behind me is basically the production facility where the units come in and we try to uh, use uh, the latest processes to be able to improve our cycle times and go forth. And so what you find here is people come in, the, the, the unit gets assembled here and then goes down into production tests which I'll show you in a little bit here. And in the production test is where we do all of the acceptance testing and the calibration of all of our units. In our manufacturing facility we have about 15 people that do it from our receiving 
receiving and, and shipping to the actual assembly and test of our units. So at Aspen, we try to pride ourselves in getting things out uh, quickly um, with high quality and supporting our products uh, as best as anybody in the industry. Freedom through control. Cirrus has completely reinvented the personal aircraft and the entire experience of owning a personal aircraft. It's a bold new take on private aviation that we call Cirrus Flying 2.0. You set the schedule. You chart the course. You're in control. Okay. Um, as I mentioned previously, we do a lot of the production um, and we put the units together. And one of the things that we uh, are really known for is our ability to produce the units and be able to calibrate our units. And what you find here in this part of the production facility is the units are fully assembled at this point. The units are then brought into this area for our calibration and eventual acceptance testing and burn-in of the units. One thing about our units, our units use sensors that are not absolute sensors. Everything is a relative sensor, so as a unit is built, it needs to be calibrated to levels of the aircraft, setting the temperatures, setting the pressures, so that, so that it accurately reflects the, the surroundings. So when the unit comes in here, so one of the first things it does is it goes through a setting of the attitude indicator. And what we you see here is what we use for, for setting that. And it's basically a level. It allows us to absolute set measure level to sea level. And with this, we are able to set those calibrations into the unit. This unit will also rotate it at 45 degrees each way and allows us to set those calibration numbers. And those numbers are then imprinted into the software and allows then to have everything set to an absolute number. Once it's done here in this leveling system over here, we then go through a calibration of the altitude sensors and the speed sensors. All of our production tests and acceptance tests are all automated, and the unit will go through a set of settings at both temperature and also at uh, altitude and different speeds. And each one of those are calibrated into a table so that then we have the absolute speeds when it goes into the unit. And what you see here is several units that are going on as we speak, going through their calibrations for the altitude and speed sensors. And this process continues to go on with each unit. And as we go through that sensor, we also go through a, a vibration test here, um, which this unit is, is here. And each one of those things, we read back the sensors to measure the accuracy of our accelerometers and, and of our gyros. And that's obviously very important because that accuracy is then used as the primary devices for giving the attitude indication and speed indication of the aircraft. Once we're done here, what we find is that we have to take our units into a calibration process. And over here, um, in this particular oven here, we go through and we do a full calibration and full setting of our uh, burn-in process. Why this is so important is numerous things. First of all, electronics in general, you have to have them go through a testing of the temperatures to read out any infant mortality that you might find in solder joints and you might find in other places. So what we do is we try very hard to go through a, a full cycle. We'll run these temperatures all the way up to 50 degrees C and down to minus 55 degrees C. And in here what you find is all these units are monitored for failures, for any kind of out of tolerance type activity that you see. And each of these units go through and we try to do as many units as possible. Um, you'll see this is a relatively full stack today, which we like to see because we have uh, some pretty good volumes these days. And each of these units will then go through. This is a four day process. Uh, we go through a full burn in cycle and calibration cycle. The other important thing to note here is that many of the sensors are temperature sensitive. And so they get imprinted in, in, with the numbers or, or the uh, calibration over the temperature cycle. And so that has to be done here. And this is spent uh, again through a four day process. And then eventually what we do is we'll take these units out of here before delivery and we'll run them through one more set of tests that are software type tests before we actually deliver. So as you can see, our process is not just manufacturing production, but it's actual acceptance testing, it's the calibration of our units, and it's to ensure that we have top quality when we deliver those units to our customers. We could continue to take data as we go along, and we, and we actually have adapted our cycles quite a bit. Early on, our first units out the door, we did have some issues with infant mortality rate, and that's how we've kind of settled on this four-day cycle, and that has been able to get our yield rates well over 99%. Um, in here to, you know, to the, get up to the world-class standards. But absolutely, and we constantly tweak it. As you might imagine, as I'm sure you recognize, in electronics and in sensors, there is variation in those. And we're constantly taking data and adapting those acceptance test procedures 
for those particular uh, occurrences.